This is Brian from Ivy Acres Homestead. I'm in Portland at the Oregon Convention Center for a COVID-19 vaccine. Oregon Health and Sciences University has organized this as well as other mass vaccination sites in the area. This will not be one of our usual videos, but I'll try to throw in some fun clips with our animals here and there. I thought it would be interesting to show people what a mass vaccination site looks like. If they let me take video inside, I'll show you what the process is like. I will let you know afterwards how I feel. In this video, I also wanted to answer some questions that folks might have about the vaccines. The simplest, most accurate and thorough way for me to do this is simply to read the frequently asked questions that OHSU has on their website. I printed it out here. There's a lot of good stuff. Some of it, all of us probably already know. Sorry in advance if watching me read a bunch of information isn't something that you're interested in. What are the top things I should know about the vaccines? Every Oregonian age 16 and older will be eligible for a vaccine starting May 1st. A vaccine will help protect you and your family from getting COVID-19. The Food and Drug Administration has given emergency use authorization to three vaccines by Pfizer, by Moderna, and by Johnson & Johnson. The Pfizer vaccine is approved for ages 16 and older. The Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines are approved for ages 18 and older. The FDA needs more data to know if the vaccines are safe for younger people. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccines require two doses, Pfizer's three to four weeks apart and Moderna's four weeks apart. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is just one dose. If you miss the recommended time frame for your second dose, schedule it as soon as you can. You do not have to start over with another first dose. Experts have placed a high priority on making sure the vaccines are safe and effective. All three vaccines approved so far were found to be highly effective in clinical trials. Cost shouldn't be an issue. The federal government is buying doses to provide free of charge. It's important to continue safety practices, wearing a mask, maintaining physical distance, and wash your hands often. Why are some groups getting vaccinated first? Supplies are limited. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommend vaccinating the highest risk groups first, and the states are following suit. I know Indigo, I agree. You are an essential worker here at Ivy Acres. That doesn't mean you're going to be eligible for a vaccine. Well, I'm not the one you have to convince.
She's just going to have to call Dr. Anthony Fauci at the CDC and convince him that goats should be getting the vaccines too. Yeah. Nothing I can do about it. All right, so they're not going to let me film inside the convention center for patient safety, for patient privacy. Because I work for the Red Cross, I'm in the phase 1A priority group for vaccinations. I've been eligible to be vaccinated for quite some time now, but getting an actual appointment has been a lot more difficult than I would have thought it would be. If you can get one, do so. Don't wait. I work for the Red Cross, but I don't speak for the Red Cross. Any opinions I express in this video are my own. The Red Cross is a strictly neutral organization of service. For me, getting vaccinated is just a common sense health decision. I want to protect myself and my family. I also want to be a part of the solution to this pandemic so we can all get back to our lives just like they used to be. How do the vaccines work? All three vaccines spur the body to make antibodies that specifically fight the coronavirus. Antibodies are made by white blood cells and are a part of the immune system, the body system to fight infection. With Pfizer and Moderna, these vaccines send a snippet of genetic material from the coronavirus, instructions called messenger RNA or mRNA, into cells. The instructions tell the cells to make a harmless spike protein like one on the coronavirus, the body's immune system recognizes that this protein doesn't belong here. It activates white blood cells to form the infection-fighting antibodies. The immune system also remembers the spike protein, so it's ready to fight the real coronavirus should it become present in the body. Once the proteins are made, the body destroys the mRNA. I'm not sure our goats are following all of this medical jargon. They get confused by the concept of a one-way gate. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a viral vector vaccine. Specifically, it's a type called an adrenovirus vector vaccine or an adrenovector vaccine. Like the mRNA vaccines, the vaccine uses a snippet of genetic material from the coronavirus to tell cells to make spike proteins. The spike proteins activate the immune system. In this case, though, instructions are in DNA, delivered in a virus called an adrenovirus. Normally, this virus causes the common cold. It's not the coronavirus. The adrenovirus is genetically altered. The virus cannot make copies of itself, and it cannot cause illness. The virus is just a carrier, a vector. The DNA cannot change your DNA. After vaccination with any of these vaccines, if you contract the coronavirus, your immune system is better able to attack it, making you less likely to, to develop COVID-19. Based on knowledge of illness, Health experts expect that if you do develop COVID-19, you will be less likely to become seriously ill if you've been vaccinated. Also, your immune system will know how to fight the coronavirus without having to come in contact with it. You know, little trooper, whoop, settle down, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> At this vaccination clinic, they let you bring a friend if you want. But that person can't be vaccinated unless they also have an appointment. I thought about bringing you. I did. But nobody would ever confuse you for a service animal. That's right. That's right. Not a service animal. Which vaccine should I get? To start your protection as soon as possible, 
you should be vaccinated as soon as possible. This means getting any of the vaccines that are available to you. The Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines have all been found to be highly effective. In addition, any new vaccine must be found to offer good protection against COVID-19 to win FDA authorization. The FDA also continues monitoring vaccines to see how they perform. I happened to get the Pfizer vaccine. They didn't have any of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and the few of the Moderna that they did have were all being saved just for folks who needed their second dose. What do I need to know about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? To start your protection as soon as possible, you should get vaccinated as soon as possible. That means getting any of the three vaccines that are available to you. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is highly effective at preventing serious illness and death. OHSU vaccination sites are offering all three vaccines. All three are safe, effective, and free of charge. They are all essential to meeting our goal of vaccinating as many Oregonians as quickly as possible. The three vaccines can't be directly compared because they were studied at different times, in different geographic areas, with different infection rates, and with different circulating variants of the coronavirus. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is one dose that makes it convenient for anyone who would find it hard to attend two appointments. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine does not need ultra-cold storage, making it an option for more areas. Is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine as effective as the ones from Pfizer and Moderna? All three vaccines are highly effective, health experts say. The three vaccines did report different efficacy rates, though, and you may have some concerns about that. Johnson & Johnson reported an efficacy rate of 66%. Pfizer and Moderna reported rates of about 95%. The efficacy rate is the reduction in any severity of illness during clinical trials among those who got the vaccine compared with those who didn't. On the most important measure, preventing hospitalization and death, Johnson & Johnson had a 100% efficacy rate. That means no one who received the vaccine in clinical trials died or needed hospital care because of COVID-19. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine also had an 85% efficacy rate for preventing severe illness. Overall, health experts advise getting whichever vaccine is available to you first. Speed is especially important as variants emerge and spread. I'd like to see the American Red Cross get more involved by providing COVID-19 vaccinations. We have thousands of phlebotomists, many of whom are actual registered nurses, we hold blood drives all day, every day. It's what we do. I don't think I'll get in trouble for saying this, but if I do, it's like John Lewis said, good trouble. Gail McGovern, if you're watching, this is a challenge for you. Once the Johnson & Johnson vaccines are widely available enough, the Red Cross should be a platform for administering the doses. I know that disaster and humanitarian services is compartmentalized away from blood services and that we are struggling financially right now. But these are historic times. Look at this symbol. We are the American Red Cross. This brand is one of the most recognized and trusted in the world. If our involvement helps more people have faith and trust in being vaccinated, then we should do this. We could be reaching underserved rural communities with parallel blood drives and pop-up vaccination clinics. I missed the recommended time frame for my second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. Should I still get it? Yes, if you got a first dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, 
it's important to get your second shot or booster. This makes sure that your vaccination is as effective as possible. Schedule your second dose as soon as you can. It's also important to know there is no maximum time between doses. OHSU has no limit on how long after a first shot people can schedule a second. OHSU recommends second doses of 19 to 35 days after your first Pfizer dose. Pfizer recommends three weeks or 21 days. 25 to 35 days after your first Moderna dose. Moderna recommends four weeks or 28 days. The CDC updated its guidelines to recommend second doses when a delay is unavoidable, up to six weeks, 42 days after the first dose. Even if you miss all these windows, you don't have to start over by repeating a first dose. Just get your second dose. There is little data on how well mRNA vaccines work when the second dose is more than six weeks after the first. That means it's not known whether waiting longer makes the vaccine more effective, less effective, or causes no change. All right. That vaccination went super smooth, absolutely easy, didn't hurt at all. It's a big peace of mind knowing that I've got the first dose already in my system. I asked and about half the folks in there were volunteers. The other half were employees. Everybody was super friendly. There's a large number of the Oregon National Guard helping out here as well. Somebody I work with got vaccinated here at the Oregon Convention Center right when they were starting quite a while back and she had to wait in a very long line. It was hours for her. They've got a lot of the bugs worked out. And for me, it was like 15 minutes to just go through the whole process. It was pretty impressive. The capacity that they could do for vaccinations. The process itself was pretty simple. There's arrows on the floor, you just follow the directions. They put you into a line, they give you a form to fill out. Go up to a table, check your ID. They also make sure that you, in fact, are on the right day for your appointment. After the vaccine, you have to wait in a uh, kind of a waiting area for about 15 minutes just to make sure that you don't have an allergic reaction. Also, they make sure that you've got your second dose scheduled before you leave the waiting area. So, I'm already set up for my next appointment. The process did go very smooth. I'd say it really reminds me of what you might experience at airport security. Just, you know, a lot of capacity to move a lot of people steadily through the system. Do I still need to wear a mask after I'm vaccinated? Yes, there are several reasons. If you have a two-dose vaccine, your vaccination won't be complete until after you've had the second dose. It can take two weeks for your body to develop immunity after your vaccination. You could come in contact with the coronavirus in the meantime. The vaccines appear to do a good job of preventing COVID-19. But experts don't yet know if being vaccinated will prevent you from carrying and spreading the virus to others with or without symptoms. Health experts say that stopping the pandemic will require every tool available. Masks, frequent hand washing, and physical distancing will still play important roles. You know, Stryker, you're not very good at this whole social distancing thing. <laughs> Thank you, Stryker. You're not very good at this whole social distancing thing, you know. I think you could probably stand 
to wash your hooves a little more often. I know where they've been. When will vaccinations be available for children? It's not clear yet. So far, vaccines are available in the U.S. only for people who are at least 16. Vaccines are first tested in adults to make sure that they are safe and effective. Then they are tested in older children before clinical trials start with younger children. Both Moderna and Pfizer have trials to test their vaccines in children as young as 12. Moderna hopes to have a vaccine approved for ages 12 and older by summer. Moderna announced that it has begun giving doses in a trial with younger children and babies as young as six months. Moderna expects to enroll about 6,750 children and babies in the trial. The company doesn't expect to have results from the trial until 2022, though. AstraZeneca is testing its vaccine in children as young as six, but it's not approved for use at any age in the U.S. yet. The trial also just has 300 children, so it won't fully answer safety questions. Meanwhile, vaccinations of adults will help protect children. As more people are vaccinated, the coronavirus will become less able to spread. Children are also at a much lower risk of serious illness from the coronavirus. Were you worried about your kids, Valkyrie? There's no reason for Valkyrie to be worried. We're gonna reach herd immunity well before goats are allowed to get the vaccines. Why aren't vaccine providers wearing gloves? Medical gloves are in short supply worldwide. Oregon would need millions of additional pairs if gloves were used for all vaccinations. In addition, under Occupational Safety and Health Administration regulations, providers are not required to wear gloves for the COVID-19 vaccinations. Except in special cases, providers can clean their hands between each recipient instead. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices agree that hand hygiene can replace glove use. Should I get vaccinated if I've already had COVID-19? Yes, it's possible to get COVID-19 again, which can result in serious illness. In addition, experts don't know how long people can expect to be immune after having COVID-19. The CDC said that early evidence suggests it's not very long. What percentage of the population needs to be vaccinated before life can return to normal? Scientists don't know yet, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, estimates the U.S. will reach population immunity, also called herd immunity, when 75 to 80 percent of the population has been vaccinated. This is the point at which enough people have immunity to keep the coronavirus from easily spreading. Are the vaccines safe? Health and government experts are confident the vaccines are as safe as possible. The FDA's emergency use authorization makes a vaccine or other treatment available quickly in a crisis. It's not a full FDA approval. Vaccines are also being developed in months instead of years. To get emergency authorization though, vaccines have gone through three phases of clinical trials involving tens of thousands of participants. Clinical trials must follow rigorous rules for safety and oversight. The FDA, CDC, and other government agencies have many systems to monitor the vaccines for any safety issues that didn't turn up in the trials. They can act quickly if a problem is spotted. Dr. Anthony Fauci is among health officials who say speed did not sacrifice safety. The speed was the reflection of extraordinary advances in the science of vaccine platform technology. Can I get COVID-19 from a vaccine? No. The Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines and others in the pipeline do not contain live virus. That makes it impossible to get COVID-19 from a vaccine. 
Are mRNA vaccines safe? Have they been used before? Although mRNA vaccines have not been widely used against an infectious disease before, they have been used in cancer treatments. Researchers have also been working with mRNA vaccines for decades in studies of the flu, Zika, and other illnesses. The mRNA vaccines for COVID-19 have been developed with the same rigorous standards applied to all vaccines. Can an mRNA vaccine change my DNA? No. DNA is in the nucleus of the cells protected by the nuclear membrane. The mRNA does not enter the nucleus and it does not affect or interact with DNA. In addition, mRNA from a vaccine cannot be made into DNA that could change a person's DNA. Are viral vector vaccines safe? Have they been used before? Viral vector vaccines have been studied since the 1970s. Two Ebola vaccines are viral vector vaccines. The vaccines have also been used in clinical trials against viruses that include Zika virus, HIV, and flu viruses. In addition, all COVID-19 vaccines approved for use in the U.S. were developed with the same rigorous standards applied to all vaccines. Can the Johnson & Johnson vaccine change my DNA? No. Unlike with mRNA vaccines, the genetic material, the DNA, does enter the cell's nucleus, but the cell only reads the instructions. The DNA cannot interact, alter, or combine with your DNA. What are the side effects? You can expect mainly mild to moderate side effects, such as fatigue, fever, chills, muscle aches and pains. In clinical trials, side effects tended to be higher after the second dose and less for those older than 65. Side effects can be managed with rest, drinking fluids, fever-reducing medications such as acetaminophen, found in Tylenol, or ibuprofen, Advil or Motrin, Call your health care provider if you have side effects that bother you or that don't go away. That's right, Rogue. Plenty of fluids do help. What should I do if I have an allergic reaction? Call 911 or go to the nearest hospital if you have a severe allergic reaction, such as swelling of the throat and mouth, trouble breathing, lightheadedness, confusion, blue skin or lips, or fainting. What do I need to know about COVID-19 vaccines and mammograms? For some people, getting a COVID-19 vaccine is followed by swelling in the lymph nodes under the arm where they got the shot. The swelling is a normal sign that your body is building protection against COVID-19. It could cause a false result on a mammogram though. If you are due for a mammogram, we recommend that you get your mammogram before your vaccine, or wait at least four weeks after your Johnson & Johnson vaccine, or after your second dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. Can I choose to get an mRNA vaccine if I'm pregnant? Yes, you may choose to be vaccinated. Though it's not required, you may want to talk with your pregnancy provider about your risk of being exposed to the coronavirus, the higher risk of serious illness for people who get COVID-19 while pregnant, the higher risk of premature birth or other pregnancy complications for people who get COVID-19 while pregnant, whether you have any other medical condition that could put you at a higher risk of serious illness from COVID-19. You may wanna talk about information about vaccines in people who aren't pregnant or the lack of information about COVID-19 vaccines in people who are pregnant. You know, we're pretty sure that a couple of our rabbits are pregnant, but they're not worried about the vaccine either. 
Look at these cages. They have to live their whole lives in quarantine. Should I get vaccinated if I'm breastfeeding? OHSU experts recommend that you talk with your health care provider. The CDC says people who are both breastfeeding and in a high priority group recommended for vaccination, such as health care workers, may choose to be vaccinated. There is no data on the safety of COVID-19 vaccines in people who are breastfeeding, in breast milk, or in breastfeeding infants. Breastfeeding people were not part of the clinical trials. The CD says, though, that mRNA vaccines are not thought to be a risk to breastfeeding infants. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends that vaccination be offered to people who are breastfeeding under the same guidelines as for people who aren't. Ninety six. No fever. I haven't had a headache. No symptoms whatsoever. Just a little bit of soreness. Hardly even noticed that at all, though. Everybody should get vaccinated.